The Wizard of Oz Movie Storybook Dorothy Gale lived on a farm in Kansas with her Auntie Em and Uncle Henry and her dog Toto. Everyone treated her kindly, including the farmhands, Hunk, Zeke, and Hickory. But Dorothy still longed for a place without any troubles. Do you suppose there is such a place, Toto? she asked. There must be far, far away. That day there was a terrible storm. The skies grew dark and the wind blew. Dorothy saw a swirling column of dust and ran into the house, holding Toto tight. The twister whirled and twirled and lifted her house up into the sky. When her house finally touched down, Dorothy and Toto were in the most beautiful place she had ever seen. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore, she said. Dorothy was right. They were somewhere over the rainbow in Munchkinland, in the land of Oz. A good witch named Glinda drifted down on a floating bubble. She told Dorothy that her house had landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, leaving only her glittering ruby slippers. The munchkins are happy because you have freed them from the witch, Glinda explained. Suddenly there was a tremendous boom and a cloud of red smoke filled the air. It was the Wicked Witch of the West. Who killed my sister? Was it you? She angrily asked Dorothy. Dorothy, trembling with fear, tried to explain it was an accident. The witch raised her broom in anger, but then she remembered her sister's magical shoes. In a flash, Glinda placed the ruby slippers on Dorothy's feet. It's too late. There they are, and there they'll stay, she said. The furious Wicked Witch promised Dorothy that the slippers would not be hers for long. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. After meeting the witch, Dorothy wanted to go home. Glinda suggested that she travel to the Emerald City to ask the great and powerful Wizard of Oz for help. Dorothy wondered how she would get there. All you do is follow the yellow brick road, Glinda said. The munchkins led Dorothy to the very beginning of the road. Dorothy quickly ran into her first bit of trouble. The yellow brick road went off in three different directions. Now which way do we go? She asked Toto. As she stood wondering what to do, a scarecrow spoke to her. That way is a very nice way. It's pleasant down that way, too. Of course, people do go both ways. The scarecrow couldn't decide which way Dorothy should go because he didn't have a brain. He desperately wanted one, though. When Dorothy told him about the Wizard of Oz, he had an idea. Do you think if I went with you, this wizard would give me some brains? Dorothy thought it was worth a try. Soon Dorothy and Scarecrow came upon a rusted tin man. Dorothy used his oil can to get him moving again. You're perfect now, she declared. The tin man didn't think he was perfect at all. Bang on my chest. It's empty. The tinsmith forgot to give me a heart. Come with us, Dorothy declared. You can ask the Wizard of Oz for one. Before the friends could start off on the road again, a cackling laugh filled the forest. The Wicked Witch had landed on the roof of the Tin Man's house. Forgotten about me, eh? She cried. She told Scarecrow and Tin Man to stay away from Dorothy. The friends were not afraid. After a while, the three companions entered a dark forest. They imagined the terrifying creatures that might be lurking in it. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my, the friends chanted together. All at once, a ferocious lion jumped out in front of them. Put him up, put him up. Which one of you first? I'll fight you all, he growled. Toto barked at the bullying stranger. I'll get you, Pee-wee, the lion said. Dorothy gathered Toto into her arms and slapped the lion away. The lion burst into tears. Why, you're nothing but a great big coward, Dorothy cried. The lion admitted he was scared of everything, including himself. Dorothy and the others invited the cowardly lion to join them on their journey. Maybe the wizard could help him, too. 
Not far away, the Wicked Witch watched Dorothy and her friends in her crystal ball. So, you won't take my warning? I'll take care of you. When I get those ruby slippers, my power will be the greatest in Oz. <laughs> she cackled. The witch mixed a poison that was attractive to the eye and soothing to the nose. The travelers marched arm in arm until they saw the Emerald City sparkling just beyond a field of poppies. As they ran toward it, Dorothy, Toto, and the Cowardly Lion were suddenly overcome by sleep. Help! cried Scarecrow. Help! cried Tin Man. Far away, Glinda heard their cries. She waved her wand and sent snow flurries to wake up the friends. Let's go! The Emerald City is closer and prettier than ever, Dorothy cried. Once inside the Emerald City, Dorothy looked around in wonder. People bustled all about, and the sidewalk sparkled. But suddenly, something streaked across the sky. The Wicked Witch of the West was writing a message. It's the witch, cried Dorothy. She followed us here. Dorothy and her friends hurried to the palace, where the guard directed them down a seemingly endless hallway. At last they entered the wizard's chamber, where an enormous head floated before them above a haze of smoke and flames. It spoke in a booming voice. I am Oz, the great and powerful. Dorothy trembled and stepped forward. I am Dorothy, the small and meek. We've come to ask you... Silence! The voice thundered. The wizard seemed angry with the visitors, so they were surprised when he agreed to grant their wishes. But first, he wanted Dorothy and her friends to bring him the broomstick of the Witch of the West. They had no idea how they were going to accomplish such a dangerous task. The friends headed to the haunted forest. A sign pointed them in the direction of the witch's castle. The wicked witch was watching in her crystal ball. She called for her winged monkeys and gave them an order. Bring me that girl and her dog. I want those ruby slippers. The winged monkeys flew over the forest until they spotted Dorothy and Toto. Back in the witch's castle, the wicked witch tried to remove the ruby slippers from Dorothy's feet, but her magic couldn't budge them. Ah! I should have known, cried the witch. Those slippers will never come off, as long as you're alive. Enraged, she turned over her hourglass and delivered a warning. That's how much longer you've got to be alive, my pretty, she shrieked. Meanwhile, Toto had escaped from the castle. Deep in the forest, he quickly found the others. They followed Toto over a rocky hillside to the witch's castle. The tin man began to sob. Oh, I hate to think of her in there. We've got to get her out. Suddenly, some of the witch's guards attacked, but the rescuers won the fight. Now they had disguises to sneak inside the castle. A prisoner in the tower, Dorothy gazed at the hourglass. Time was running out. Just then, Scarecrow and the others broke down the door and rescued Dorothy. They fled, but the witch and her guards soon cornered them. Going so soon, the witch cried. The witch set her broom on fire and touched it to the scarecrow's sleeve. When Dorothy threw a bucket of water to put out the flames, it splashed all over the witch, too. The wicked witch shrieked in horror. She disappeared bit by bit until all that was left of her were her clothes. The grateful guards proclaimed Dorothy their hero and gave her the witch's broomstick as a gift. She and her three companions took it straight to the wizard. Please, sir, we've done what you told us, Dorothy said at the wizard's palace. Dorothy expected the wizard to keep his promise. Instead, he ordered them to leave. Go away and come back tomorrow, the wizard shouted angrily. Then Toto tugged back the curtain and revealed a man was operating a machine. 
He was the real Wizard of Oz. Though the wizard had tried to fool them, he now agreed to help. He declared that the scarecrow didn't lack a brain, but a diploma. The scarecrow felt smarter the minute he held it in his hands. Then the wizard assured the cowardly lion that he was wise to fear danger and gave him a medal in honor of his great courage against the wicked witch. The tin man was next. The wizard pointed out that his many good deeds were proof that he did have a heart. What the tin man needed instead was recognition for his acts of kindness. He was awarded a heart-shaped clock for all to see. Finally, it was Dorothy's turn. The wizard would take her back to Kansas in a hot air balloon. They were all ready to lift off when at the last minute, Toto jumped out of the balloon to chase a cat. Dorothy ran after him and the wizard accidentally took off without her. Dorothy watched the balloon disappear and began to cry. Oh, now I'll never get home. Suddenly a shimmering bubble appeared. It was Glinda. She gently explained that Dorothy had always the power to return to Kansas. She simply had to learn it for herself. Dorothy thought for a moment and replied, If I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard. Because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. After a tearful goodbye to her friends, Dorothy clicked her heels and repeated, There's no place like home. 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 She woke up with her family and friends gathered around her. She was home. Dorothy told them about her amazing journey, and then she said, I'm not going to leave here ever, ever again, because I love you all.